Oh, there's there it is. There it is. <laughs> I do Cohen. it. <laughs> of course. We, we got Erica Boz Bosman. Yeah, basically. Both cool. you know, Bozeman. Bosman. We'll take we'll take them all. So I what think, do you what do you um go by? Boz or Bosman? I usually go by Bose. Oh, Bose. <laughs> I pronounced it wrong. <laughs> that Bose Bozeman? I just go just Bose. Okay, so I'm gonna let's start again. <laughs> Wait, are we like rolling yeah, right into going, it? But I can edit it. Whatever, it, 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 it's going. But I'm just, I'm just trying. I'm trying to keep it light. So, okay. Okay. Um, okay. I had discovered you through, um, just, uh, you know, I, I know you've done David So's uh, thing, and then I knew, and then you were on JK News as well, right? In yeah. Uh huh. And then, um big mood as well right yeah yeah okay so let's start before then like where are you originally uh from and um before you started streaming and all that <laughs> wait stevie are we just like in it is this it is this like the this is it this oh, is the we're show in. yeah we're, we're, we're in the swimming pool yeah we're in we're in <laughs> yeah we're, oh, in. we're in okay you're yeah, just gonna so launch just, me in yeah, i mean it's cannonballed into the pool <laughs> Okay. I'm down. Listen, Stevie, I can't swim, but I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you what I can. Okay. okay. You're like, so you're like, where did I come from? Well, yeah. Where are you originally from? And like, yeah, just your backstory. Okay. Yeah. My backstory. Um, <laughs> wait, I need a, I had to drink a little before yeah, yeah, this. Okay. Drink, drink I, or whatever you need to do. Oh, yeah. Stevie, this is not tea. All right. Now. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Just, whatever it is, uh, your lemon flavored, uh, a beverage there. Lemon flavored tea. You're absolutely okay. right. Okay. Okay. Mm. So I started on Twitch, I would say yeah. like six years ago. Wow. Okay. Um, um, video gaming? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, what games? I played League of Legends. All right. All right. Cool. Yeah. Cool. I, yeah. So go ahead. I played a lot of League. I played mostly just League, honestly. Like, dude, I was crazy, Stevie. I would stream for like 15 hours a day, nonstop playing League of Legends, playing like Udir in the jungle, which is this giant man that's dressed like a bear and he just beats the shit out of people, okay? Whoa. Yeah, so like I would literally for 15 hours a day, like rage at my computer with like 50 viewers just playing this giant bear man, just beating the shit out of people. And I loved every second of it. How okay. Did you, how did you keep up that stamina for 15 hours of just let alone gaming, but streaming it? How do you do that? Sugar free monster, and I like the attention. <laughs> Okay, okay. So we have Fair a enough. we have a yeah. chemical and a psychological component here. Okay. okay, that's cool. So you just did it for fun at first, right? You're like, I'm just gonna twitch and just I'm gonna just see what happens. Hey, let me tell you this. Let me tell you this just to get you, just so you gotta understand me. I do everything for fun. I all I care about is like I wouldn't say I'm like an adrenaline junkie, but like I'm or even like a thrill seeker, but like, I'm always trying to have the most fucking fun possible. I want right. to laugh at shit. I want to play video games. I want to hang out with my friends. I want to get drunk. I want to do crazy shit. Yeah. I want to light some shit on fire. Not really, but like, you know what I mean? Like I'm yeah. just always trying to have the best time possible. So for me, playing video games and getting paid and just like talking to friends for hours and then sometimes getting drunk was the, like the best thing ever. But yeah. I, I was like maybe 23 or 24 at the time. And I lived with my parents. So like, you know, I wasn't making crazy money, you know? Oh, sorry, um, was this in Los Angeles? No, no, no. I was in Virginia. Okay. So this is what happened, Stevie. So I'm sitting on my computer streaming Grand Theft Auto for like 40, 50 people max or something Great like that. game, by the way. Great freaking yeah. game. Good yeah. shit, right, man? Oh, like, yeah. Can I cuss here? Yeah. Okay, shit. It's light. Yeah. yeah. It's light. Yeah, that's light. That's okay. Light. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So I'm playing this game and this guy comes in my channel and he was like, Hello, I'm a casting director in Los Angeles and I have been trying to get in touch with you. And I'm like, What? You know, like this is mad weird. Yeah. Um and so I wait, I'm gonna do a pause really quick in case you have to edit. My internet's been really fucky lately. 
Yeah, so, mine too, but you, you, you seem like you're clear on this end. Yeah, but it might drop randomly out of nowhere. If it does that, I can rejoin on my phone, I think, but I just wanted yeah. to give you the heads up. Okay, cool. No problem. Yeah. Okay. So I'm streaming Grand Theft Auto and this dude comes into my channel and he's like, I'm a casting director. I've been trying to get in touch with you. What is your email? And at the time, like I had a lot of like weird stuff going on at Twitch. So I didn't know if this guy was real or just trying to get my personal info. What do you um, mean by weird stuff? Can you give us some examples? Like Twitch is really strange because on YouTube, people leave, com if people hate you on YouTube, yeah. they leave a comment. And then they leave and then they're like, I told that, you know, I told her off, you know? Oh but on, yeah. Mm -hmm. But on Twitch, when people say something mean to you in chat, they get to see your live reaction. So you get a lot of people that mm. essentially want, sometimes want to hurt you because yeah. they get to see everything. On YouTube, when they leave the mean comment, if the creator doesn't respond to it, it's just dead in the water. And in fact, sometimes they feel stupid later. But if you, somebody says something mean and you read it or you react to it or you look sad, people want to mess with you more. So I've had people impersonate me. I've had people dox me. I've had people stalk me. I've had somebody call my mother before. Um, and this is all when I was a really small streamer. It has to do a little bit more with the culture of Twitch. I've had people like upload like uh, fake porn videos of me before. I had had somebody um like I, yeah i've had a lot of like really crazy stuff happen before oh there was this one guy that tried to pretend that he knew my brother and like went on it for a long time here's the thing stevie i don't have a brother okay he had just like searched my information online and found a guy with the last name bozeman that lived in virginia that was around my age and so he was trying to reach out to this guy that's what I mean by weird stuff. Okay. Oh, I had no idea. This happens on Twitch. I, yeah, it's stalking on Twitch and harassment on Twitch, particularly for like women is insane. There was a girl um, just a day or two ago where there's a, a clip of her where she's just streaming, talking to her stream, but somebody called a gas leak to her house and made like the fire brigade show up. And then while the firemen were there, they delivered 25 pizzas to her house. That's and so, that's crazy. I mean, what, what kind of individual has the time and effort to do something like that? People on the internet, but yeah, that's what I mean. So like YouTube, you don't, if somebody stalks you and does that to you. Oh, I've, I've had mean comments, but I just don't pay it no mind. <laughs> no, these, these people, they want to get you. They want to get you. Oh, so no, I'll either block them or I won't, pay, I won't even read it. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe I, I need to start blocking people. Yeah. Stevie. You just got to put up your wall and be like, okay, you're done. <laughs> I'm going to take a couple notes. I don't from read you, nothing. Man. Yeah. I don't read nothing. Yeah. Zero. So I read zero. Well, yeah, with, yeah, the person that called my mom, the guy that called my mom, he like begged my mom, I blocked him. And so he got in touch with my mom at her job and he had begged my mom to get me to talk to him because he wanted Whoa. to apologize. Yeah. That's it was crazy. That's yeah, yeah. crazy. Super now, crazy. Go, let's go back to this casting agent. <laughs> okay. It, it happened to be legit, right? Yeah. So I still like, listen, Stevie, I'm, I'm broke bitch from Virginia. Okay. And I still remember being in my mom's room when I got a phone call from a Beverly Hills area code. And I was like, I was like, take me away. What, so I, what area code's that? I don't know. I don't know nobody from Beverly Hills. I don't Hills. know. Look, I don't know, but it said Beverly Hills when it came with my phone oh, and I said, okay. hello. Yeah. Yeah. So so like I talked to them, I go through like three or four auditions and I got cast into this gaming channel and it was a really big gaming channel. So they moved me out to LA. They gave me salary. It was really like, Whoa. Well, yeah. It, just to like play video games and be popular on the internet, which what, is what, uh, can we give them a shout out? What company was it? We can't give them a shout out, but oh, I will no, say the name right. of well, them. Can you, can you mention the name though? The, it was the... called Smosh. Smosh. Yeah. Are they still was... around? Yeah, it's a YouTube channel. So you initially just did it for fun, got this random email, and they moved you out to LA? To play video games. To play video games, which you were doing anyway. All right, let's continue. I, didn't, <laughs> I had no idea. That's a, that's a crazy story. I know. You Hey, man, you never know who's watching yeah, your stuff, okay. right? So you did that, and then how did you start networking once you got here meeting all these other people like the jk people and the big mood people like how when did that start happening 
Um, so actually JK came and they did a shoot with us at Smosh. Um, oh. yeah, I've met, I've met a lot of like people in my time in LA, but my thing is, is that like, I don't like having superficial relationships. I've had a lot of bad experiences with other influencers and YouTubers. Like yeah. if somebody slides into my DMs to like, hey girl, we should collab. Like, I don't want to hear Oh that yeah, there's like, red flags you. just your yeah. tone right there. <laughs> That's I'm like, a red flag. are you kidding me? Like my, I had a girl that um, we followed each other for a year or two, actually longer than that. And I very recently hit her up and I was like, yo, do you want to get high and watch true crime documentaries? That's how I try to engage with people. I try to like, I only try to hang out with people I really like. So, yeah. so I had collabed with a lot of different people through Smosh, like in those two years. And like, I mean, we had so many people come in and out of the studio, but yeah. Tiff, I think it was it was Tiff who I really connected with. She was like my partner for this. Oh, game shout show. out to Tiff! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We love Tiff. Yeah. So Tiff was my partner on it, and I just like really, really liked her. And I think the other person that was there was Joe. Joe and I didn't talk as much, but I like Joe. I talked to. I was like talking to him about his mushrooms the other day. He's like doing this. Oh, whole Joe mushroom. from JK. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we stand Joe. So I had met Tiff and Joe, and I really, really like them. And Tiff does the casting for JK News. Yeah. So she just invited me on one day and we just all clicked. Like my thing is like JK News is so fun. You just get to hang out with people and talk about crazy news stories. Oh and listen, yeah. Stevie, I can talk for hours. I literally will run my, my I'm trying to like censor myself today. Yeah. I, I will literally run my mouth for eight hours straight and have a blast as long as I have fun with the people I'm talking to. Oh yeah, so, and they're all fun. They're all fun dude, over there. Yeah. And any day that I got invited to a JK News shoot, like to me, it was just like, hey, do you want to come hang out with people like for a whole day? And I'm like, absolutely. Yeah, like, don't they start at like seven in the morning? Like, how do they like, <laughs> don't they have one day where they start like in the morning, then they have a lunch break and then boba break? Yeah. Then, yeah. I usually, I usually have, because I've done it in the past, but I have never made the morning sessions. Uh, I, I come, I usually would come after while they're having boba. Oh dude, I'll do a full day. I'll tell them, I'll <laughs> tell them, strap me in. I'll take that. I, I used to, so I used to work at a law firm too, like about a year or so ago. And yeah. I would take days off work to like go to JK news. I would okay. only have like one day off of work, like every two months or so. And I would use my day off to go shoot with JK. Yeah. And then you could, you learn, to, you could learn a lot from them. Can't you? As far as just like their work, work ethic and everything. Like their workflow and like, yeah, how they cause I've had, they've come it's on crazy, and I've right? asked them, I go, Hey, like, do you have any pointers? And, and once I found out how much work they really put in, it like blew me away. I'm like, Whoa, like they, they put, they do a lot of content. Yeah. 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 They bulk it all up and they fire it off. Yeah. yeah they know what they're doing. I love them. So, so, so that's how you met all them. And then you met David. So that way as well. <laughs> yes, baby yeah. David. I love like, Oh, I have such a special place in my heart for David. So yeah, no he, doubt. No doubt. Yeah. He's just, I don't, I don't, I can't even describe it. I'll have to like get out pen and paper one day and try to figure out like, why do I love David? But yeah, <laughs> I, he's just like, he's such like good, good vibes. And like, I oh, can't, yeah. 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 I and, love his, uh, I love his Instagram and his YouTube and everything. He's so funny, dude. Yeah. I think so like David, he, I met him through JK and, um, I don't even know how we stayed in touch. I think we just did Genius Brain like once or twice. And like, we just kept, I don't know. Yeah, that's his podcast, right? Genius Brain. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. I still haven't got on there. So David, if you're watching, I would love to, I love to take part in Genius Brain. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta, uh, do, you gotta do a trial by combat. That's how I got in. Oh, okay, I to, okay. I had to beat the crap out of David and he let me come on. He said I was worthy. And then, so let, let's go back to, so are you, are you still, what are you doing? Like, how did that elevate or progress to big mood? Um, so it was actually originally called Hey Bitch. 
And Gio started this, she kind of like, well, it was like a collaborative thing. Like Jess set up this shoot where like all the JK news girls, like, you know, just kind of Disney together. And then Gio was like, this needs to be a show. Cause y'all, yeah. y'all, y'all got something. So Gio, it was really funny. She had invited me to join Hey Bitch. And at the time I had just gotten a like really big, like marketing job at Live Nation. I had just started like my big girl, like corner office, 90210, like boot. Wait, job. Live Nation, the music promoters that put on concert events? Yeah, I was a marketing director at Live Nation last oh, year. Oh, damn. Yeah. So I had just gotten that job. I was trying to leave content creation, leave the whole influencer sphere. It was just really unstable for me. And I wanted to do more corporate stuff in LA. How did so, you get that job? How did you even get your foot in the door there? I've been in marketing for 10 years. Oh, so I, damn. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, and then so you're at Live Nation at this point then? Yeah. So I was, so I worked at, um, so I worked at Live Nation and I had, so this was May of 2019. And I don't know if I've ever talked about this like super publicly before. Maybe, I think I have. Um, but I had just gotten my marketing job at Live Nation. And so the main thing for me was I was planning to leave content creation and being an influencer and join this corporate world. Yeah. And that's it. This was my new path. So this was in May and at the end of May, Gio hits me up and is like, Hey, I'm starting a show. I want you to be a part of it. And I yeah. kind of, I pushed back on her because I was planning to, you know, do this, you yeah, know, do the right, corporate right. thing. And there's no way that I could do both. And I just, I just, yeah. And so I told her, I was like, Hey, I don't know. Um, I'm really starting this and I really want to do this. And I want to go all into this. And Gio was like, Oh, we're only going to shoot once a month. It's fine. You can do it. And I was like, okay yeah <laughs> so she kind of like pushed me into it and yeah. and like i you know you can't say no to geo everyone loves right, geo right, so right. i so i just said fuck it i'm like all right we're shooting once a month we'll probably meet once a month otherwise i'm like it's two days a month okay i can do this i can do this so i joined the cast and we started shooting by like may or june and yeah. the show launched and it was a really big hit and it was yeah really, i know really people fun. yeah it's still yeah people people liked it yeah it was and we, what, about, I, what about the live nation job did you still keep that while you're doing all this yeah so i was working so i worked full-time at live nation and i still kind of like kept the influencer thing up yeah. um so I actually quit Live Nation in February, but for that entire year, I was basically living off of my salary and I saved every brand deal, like every podcast track, like everything that came yeah. in. And I just, and I saved some of my salary too. So I was able That's to- crazy. Yeah, I was able to save up a lot for a year. And then do you, are you still a part of that or what happened with that? Like- No, 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 no. I'm not a big mood anymore. We did a whole video about it basically, but- Oh, yeah. you did? Yeah, basically the group got a little bit smaller. I'll link it to you later if you want to- Oh, like okay, okay. So that's all covered. Yeah. Um, I just, I, cause I was trying to do research and I think I saw a little part of it. I think I, correct me if I'm wrong. Did, did you get approached to like doing music as well? Like producers hitting you up? Oh, um, so I actually, I, it's so weird. I get, I do. Okay. Since I like talking a lot, I end up doing a lot of shows. Like, you know, us, we're talking yeah, yeah, right yeah. now, you know? So in turn, I end up getting a lot of exposure. So I end up getting a lot of offers, I guess. Um, wait, wait, so, wait, for music specifically? No, just for like anything. It can be for podcasting or anything, but I started a music venture about, uh, four or five months ago. Um, only because it's a personal hobby of mine. It was something yeah. I always wanted to do. So I got a new apartment. I built a music studio. Wow. Um, yeah. I got it like a music production teacher and I just do it for fun. I mean, yeah. obviously I'd, I'd love to, um, you know, put out more music and do things in the future. But for now, I think that everyone should have a hobby. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. And we're in the um, era now. Technology allows us to do home recordings. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. my God. My dude, my, my setup is actually I mean, like pretty sick. I don't doubt it. I could tell just by like what I'm seeing now, the mic and just the, the layout. Oh, I, yes. I could kind of tell. No, it's, it's pretty um, bare. It's all, it's all over there. Oh, <laughs> who are some of your musical influences? Like who do you, who, what kind of stuff do you like to like listen to? And, um, I, I listen to everything. And actually, I'm going to mess you up here, Stevie, because my favorite genre of all time is probably something that you may not have even heard of before. And it's called agrotech. 
or industrial music, or it's almost a subset. I love heavy metal. I love, um, in Whoa, like, what is aggro? What is, I need it's to write like, it down. What dude, it's aggro? so bad. You're going to be like, this is the worst thing that I've ever heard in my entire life. And I just love it so is much. It digital music. Is it like, yeah, it's, so it's cool. like, it's like digital metal. That's the best way I can describe it. Agro tech. How do you spell that? <laughs> I'm so embarrassed. Oh, and it's like, Okay, it's called like electro industrial. I would have to. Oh yeah, this is my whole genre: KMFDM, Wumpscut, Electron Frontline. Is hold up, I, I, hold up. I need. To, I'm writing it down. <laughs> Electronic okay. industrial. Yeah. Oh, it's my favorite thing in the whole world. Okay, I'll never who are some up. of the prominent groups in this genre? Um, I would probably say KMFDM is really good. Um. Rabbit Junk is probably one of my favorite. Oh, I love Rabbit Junk so much. They just put out a new album. Are these are these groups from the UK? No, but there's oh my god, there's so many. There's a lot of um European like industrial that's really 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 good. Yeah. Um it's yeah, it's a, it's a really interesting genre of music, but I've been really into it since I was a kid. Um, how would you describe it? If how would you describe that genre? Um, very angry, very like power driven, lots it's of drums. Bass. It's electronic drums. <sighs> I, it's, God, it's, it gets really, it's interesting. Oh, Aslan Faction. You'll have to write that down. That's one of my favorite bands oh, of all time. Spell that. You're going to, you're going to listen to this and you're going to think I'm an insane person, Stevie. Well, I'm, I, I, I like, I'm open-minded towards finding new types. No, no, no. You won't. Like listen, I'm telling you right now, you're not going to like this, but if yeah, you will give me a headache. Yes. But if you listen to it, you'll, it'll just be interesting to know that this exists. Right. Okay. Like I like heavy metal, you know, like I like Iron Maiden and like, you know, it's not like that. No. I like electronic and I like jungle and, and drum. You know and what? How do you feel about Ramstein? I'm not too familiar. Okay, it's it's okay. It's like all of these bands I'm telling you, it's yeah. like Ramstein on steroids. Ramstein is like the popular version of this. Okay, how do you I'm spell talking. that? R A M M S T E I N. That's where you should start. You should start there. Ramstein. Yes. R A M M S T E I N. Oh yeah, start start right okay, there. Okay, so that's your no, that's your favorite type of music are you gonna are you gonna are you gonna start creating that genre too um I don't think I would create that genre because I don't think people would appreciate it but it is something that's really like near and dear to me I yeah. think that I would do more um kind of like hip-hop and lo-fi inspired stuff yeah I like that stuff yeah yeah I I love that stuff too um yeah, I'm stuck in the 90s I just I just I can't I can't get out of it. I, I just really, like, yeah, I like the 90s. I mean, if you, you can see in the back of Tribe Called Quest and stuff like Oh, that. do you like, do you like 90s hip hop? Uh, yeah, that's my thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. We could, I feel like we could yeah. actually go on this like, for like, like I, the planets, like Dale the Funky Homo sapien. K but like, how deep does it go? What about like boogie monsters or like, what boogie monsters? <laughs> What do you know? Oh, Honey, Virginia. Virginia. God, that makes sense. Virginia. Dude. Okay, I'm glad you brought Boogie Monsters. That's like one of my, <laughs> my favorite groups of all time. Wait, like Honey Dips and Gotham style? Or oh, like yeah. ah! strange. All that. Oh my oh, god, I could trade you so much. Like if I pulled up my last FM right now, I would just be going. Wait, because hold, let's break down. Okay, so I'm gonna describe to the viewers and listeners what the Boogie Monsters. There were a four-piece band or hip-hop group they were like the ver east coast version of like the far side but yes oh my god far side yeah. dude the boogie monsters i'm so glad you brought that up because i was um in college in my dorm room probably hung over my homeboy jamel knocks <laughs> on my door and he goes I, hey i'm sorry to bother you here i i want you to listen to this and he had the um the Boogie Monsters, their first album. Oh my God. Wow. So this is like sentimental. This for is you in the nineties. Yeah. This is like, he had the CD. Wow. Like, Who the hell? But the, the, it, it stood out because it looks psychedelic and shit, you know? So I, I, I'm like, all right. Cause you know, I, he had good, um, we had the same musical taste, you know what I mean? So, but when I put it on, I knew right away. I'm like, oh, this is, this is, this is the stuff I like. 
Yeah. What, what, so were you already into like old school hip hop at the time? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I ditched wrestling practice to go to the Beastie Boys um, Cypress Hill concert. I did. Okay. And then I remember in high school, my homeboy had a Suzuki Samurai. It was like this little um, Jeep, you know? And he's like, come to this little club in Escondido. It's in San Diego. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's this group that's playing from LA. I, I, I can't even, I don't really know who they are, but it was the far side. And so I remember walking in this little club and there, not a lot of people were there, but I remember seeing the stickers up, you know, the fire hydrant and the dog, it was like a yellow and black sticker. And it was, it, their performance like blew my mind. Oh my God. It, it like opened up my mo- brain to like, whoa, this is like really raw hip hop shit, you know? Dude, the, okay. So th- my thing about it is that like, it almost rap quartets or like just groups in general. You, when yeah. you think about it, boy bands and girl bands are like very successful, but they're engineered. When you have a quartet of like rappers, these are four people that love what they do and they're oh, probably- yeah really good at it like oh my god you know one of my favorite of all times bone thugs and harmony oh, oh yeah and, and like it's i love because of their um just like their their rap stylings their style like the way crazy is so good like i will listen to a crazy freestyle all day okay wait hold on i was just investigating this i but looked at Boogie my monsters you really hit home with that ah, but, of course but, but once uh I, I i i analyzed it i'm like oh it makes sense because they're from virginia are they from Virginia? I didn't even know that. Yeah, I think they I just, are. I think they are from Virginia. I know there's from looking. somewhere around there, either there or the Carolinas, but I think it's Virginia. I think they're from Virginia. And one of the guys, I don't know if it was Vex or another member, ended up being like a, a like a preacher. Like he ended up being like a pastor of a church. I could see that. I'm a, well, but I mean, like, that's easy. I'm a reverend, so. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm a legal reverend. But wait, have you, okay, wait, hold on. I got to ask you this. I know we're doing a show and stuff right now, but yeah, now this is just you and me. really made my day by, by bringing up the Boogie Monsters because that's you know? definitely like one of my all-time favorite groups. Like I, a lot of the way I make my beats is like trying to like, you know, go back there, like how like those dudes did it, like, like the samples and like just the oh, raw breaks and stuff like that. It's so good. Did you ever listen to uh, Cannibal Ox? Oh yeah, I'm a oh, fan of, yeah, I'm a fan of Death hey, Sex, El Producto. My, my I like all that stuff. My MySpace name for years was Vast Air because I was such a Cannibal Ox fan. Oh yeah, they were really dope. Yeah, um, and there's oh. a, I just watched this documentary. It's on YouTube, and I I had the DVD, but I remember revisiting it, and it, it has like them in it. It has um Cannibal Ox in it, LP. Ooh. And Aesop Rock and all them dudes. So I, I really liked that label back then because they were doing something uh, different, you know? Mm-hmm. And yeah. Anything that's different, like, I mean, so shout out to Hieroglyphics as well because they they, they they were doing their own thing, Living Legends and Shapeshifters, like even like little pockets of like LA um, groups, like the Nantes. Uh, yeah, I like all that stuff. You know who really got me that did things different? You have to know this, Cunning Linguist. Yeah, I didn't get, I know who they are, but I didn't get too much. I like the arsonist. The arsonist Man. is dope, yeah. Um, I'm like really, even within the genre, like I'm like kind of picky within that subgenre. I try to get like, I try to look for like the obscure of the obscure. Okay, know? I got to put you on. I have to put you on Cun and Linguist. Just go to their Spotify and just oh, whatever. Yeah, I've, I've heard is. some of their stuff. I just didn't really get in like um, that. Yeah. Into, I, Cunning, are they from, they're from the East Coast, right? Yeah, I think so. I just, I mostly liked that they had, it was a rap duo with different, com- both of them had completely different styles. Yeah. And the way that they overlapped each other in their songs, I've never seen it before. So one of the things that I got into when I got into production, I don't really do beats mostly. I love doing vocal mis- mixing and I love doing vocal arrangements. Yeah. Um, I started taking like vocal lessons like two years ago when I came to LA. I'd done it on and off when I was a kid, but uh, look, look, Stevie, now I smoke too much fucking pot. So I. <laughs> um, are you um? What kind of um? Since you brought it, what kind of programs and 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 uh, gear are you you utilizing? 
Sure. Um, so I have a, I have a pretty dope keyboard. I have a Roland FAO seven, um, or I'm sorry, I have a Roland FO seven. I didn't have get an 88 key. I don't know why. And then I use Ableton. Um, but Ableton can be pretty complicated. So I actually have a teacher for that. Cause I'm so new to all this. I it's have it and I still don't know how to use it. We got to take a class together. I have, CB. No, I mean, I literally have spent hours just looking at the screen and like looking at those colored boxes and just trying to start something up i'm like so old school like because i i learned uh beat making from just samplers you know and it's yeah. like okay i just this button will loop this and then i just you know it's like i just but like these programs uh it, they seem overwhelming to me yeah dude you got that's that's what happened to me i was i was using fruity loops for a bit and i oh, just felt I, I used to fuck with fruity loops yeah i felt a little paralyzed moving forward with it but i also thought if i wanted to get serious in music production i should really learn ableton yeah so i switched over to ableton so i have i have like you know my keyboard i have like an electronic drum set i use yeah. ableton i have uh, i use melodyne for like any like pitch correction and things like yeah. that um I have like a, you know, I have like a little like MIDI keyboard. Yeah, yeah. All my so stuff. I could see you, cause since you're already, you're kind of prepped to be recording, you know, like if a producer watches the, let's say there's a producer just like the same way the, the casting agent hit you up, where could they like send their beats or their music to you? So you, you know what I mean? It's for you to check oh, out. Oh, if you have people that watch this, that want to collaborate with me and make music, There's I will jump on that so fast. Production heads, maybe, you know? Oh shit. Yeah, no, go, go to my Instagram, DM me, DM me your stuff. Okay. I will do it. What, what's that again? Oh yes. My Instagram, it's at big boss bows, B I G B O S S B O Z E. Okay. And then are, are you open to that? Because it seems like you're already prepping for that. Would you want to record like an EP or something to put out there in the world? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. I, I think it's, oh, I just, like I said, I like doing shows like this. I like talking and I would absolutely collaborate with people that like yeah. had a good beat or something. And they were just like, Hey Bose, we need you to record this, do this. I'll be like, yes, let's fucking go. I'll drop it on my Instagram. Let's yeah. go the fuck off. And I just do wanna... you have a YouTube as well. Yeah, but my, for, so my YouTube just got started. I stream on Twitch and YouTube, but I do crime on those channels. What do you mean? I, I, I commit crimes on live stream. No, I'm just kidding. I, I cover like true crime and oh, stuff. Oh, you cover, <laughs> okay, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, okay, so that's like that, that's cool content, yeah. Like live streaming, like, like breaking into people's stories, houses, like solving crime. Yeah, so I do like um, I do true crime on my Twitch, but like we do a lot of interesting stuff too. Like um, I <laughs> this sounds really messed up, but like we'll do like mean letters to serial killers. So like yeah. I'll cover a whole case about somebody that's awful and killed a bunch of people, and then I'll find out what jail that they're at, and we'll write a mean letter to them and like actually send it off. <laughs> Whoa, like, oh really I, yeah i do this kind of stuff on stream or like i my stream really wants me to do this and i said i'm gonna do it but i'm gonna actually start streaming and going out to some of the crime scenes like the oj simpson crime scene yeah. is in Beverly Hills. um there's so many crime scenes that are in la and you could do like a vlog too as well right yeah, 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 yeah. So that's that is that is my job right now. I so I, I told you this before when I was at Live Nation, I had like saved up a bunch, and then I've also been working a whole lot this year, and like things have been going really well. So I took about like six months off of work um, with the pandemic and everything going on, but it was I focused on mental health a lot, which right, is right, right, really good because I'm like, look, nobody's working right now. I may as well do a little mental. Yeah. Um, and so then about two months ago, like September, I was like, okay, I'm ready to work again. I don't know yeah. what to do. And I just started doing true crime and my stream just like blew up, like out of nowhere. So that's just what so I, this is on your Twitch stream. Yeah. And then are you, you're still doing that right weekly? I do that every, I do that every Monday at six o'clock Pacific oh, standard time. <laughs> okay. So every Monday at six o'clock, um, and what, what's your uh, Twitch stream again? Oh, my Twitch team, same thing. Twitch.tv slash Big Boss Bows. There it is. But and, if you don't like murder so stuff. Every week you do something different. Like you play, play, play a new game or, or stream something different. 
Yeah, we I watch a lot of um, like true crime documentaries. Usually we pick a case yeah. um, and we'll cover it really thoroughly. Like I did the like what happened to Britney Spears stream because that's technically crime to an extent. I've done like the Jody Arias murder case, which was insane. I did the DC oh, sniper. Oh, the one in Arizona. Oh my God. Yes, Stevie. And that and woman- she's the absolutely- one that ended up killing that dude in the shower. Yes, she's insane. Wait, I can saw I- her, uh, her court hearing on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and everyone's like, she's, wait, really? hold on. let me tell you this. I have to tell you this part of the, the Jodi Arias case because I didn't yeah, know I'm this. I'm going to write that down, Jodi Arias. She's, it, make sure you write next to it. She's fucking insane. So yeah. Jodi was dating that guy for six months. Yeah. And then he broke up with her and then she moved from where she lived to California to where he lived because she wanted to get back with him. And like, he would always like tell her like he didn't want to chill. And she started sneaking in through the doggy door in his house to surprise him. <laughs> I know, I know. So, so my entire, so my whole thing on my stream is like, we love bullying murderers because murderers deserve to be bullied. And we call her doggy door Jody. Dude, she was, she had a couple loose screws then. Dude, I think that sh- the screws have been loose and they fell out somewhere back there. The screws were gone, Stevie. She Did lost she it. Get life in prison? Um, I, yeah, I think so. Yeah, that. Yeah, I just remember seeing because there's documentaries about that case on YouTube. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And you know what? There's also documentaries about it on my channel because that's what yeah, <laughs> that's that's so cool. Yeah, that's always that always makes for good content. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. We're it's we're getting down to the last five to seven minutes. Uh, this thing flew by. Oh my god, it's Stevie. I mean, it went by so fast. It went by really quick. Now I want to take this. Uh, I had a couple of just uh, questions because out of my own curiosity about Twitch. Now, can how do people support you on that? Do they subscribe to you on Twitch, or how does that work? Well, okay. So you mean like financially how? Yeah, like financially. Like, can they do like a monthly subscription type thing? Yeah. Um, I, I've i always done Twitch for fun ever since I started. A lot of the times I just do Twitch to keep up with my fan base. Since I'm not posting on YouTube regularly, I need to give them an avenue to find me. Yeah. Um, so I literally just stream on Twitch for fun, but the way that people make money off of it is you make ad revenue off of it. And then also like people can subscribe to your channel. Um, there's a bunch bunch of people that subscribe to me. They, you know, they get, I don't know, they get to hang out every Monday and yell at me. If you're a subscriber, yell at me. I don't care. That's fine. You know, if you pay me, yell at me, (laughs) do it. Right. right. What's the most, um, fulfilling thing about Twitch? I mean, cause it's, I, I, Mm -hmm. I realized that I noticed that cause I, I tried to do it, but then I realized I, I, I got in my head, like I stopped having as much fun, you know? Like yeah. the game, you know, like I felt like I had to entertain or something. Yeah, that, so that, that is a thing. That's primarily why I don't really game on Twitch that much anymore. Twitch right. has really evolved. You can do anything on Twitch. There's an entire music community too, Stevie. Yeah, like there's I a whole. Had Andy Milanakis on a few uh, episodes ago and he said that, yeah. And, and then he says that he, you could cook on it and people will watch you cook a meal or something. Yeah, I've done cooking on Twitch. You can do music on Twitch. You could read a book on Twitch. So it, it's all about finding what you want to do and just going for it. So there's a lot of people, Twitch isn't just gaming. There's yeah. a lot of people that love just playing video games for 12 hours a day and they don't have to read chat. But if you get on and you're like, I should game, I will game. And, and then that's how you're going to get nervous. But if you're just sitting at, like at home and you're, you could, you could stream this if you wanted to, you know, it's what, just, just about just doing this interview. Absolutely. You could have streamed this hundred percent. Yeah. If people were how down, would, for it. how would I do that technically uh, through the Elgato or how does that work? Yeah. You use a program called OBS and you would screen capture this region right here. All you need are people that consent to a live interview. And this is exactly what you could start with, Stevie. Uh, I'm looking at my desktop and I already have OBS installed. Well, that's the first step. Yeah. Okay, so I already have some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. How do I hook up the Elgato? You don't have to use the Elgato. You just got to pop open. You got to just pop open. We'll talk about this later. Oh, okay. So we'll, you just we'll get pop- you set up. Okay. Okay. So- <laughs> So I have the potential to, to get there. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. That, and that's such a, I think the most intimidating thing about Twitch is starting. Cause when you get started and you're like, oh, I have 10 viewers. Like it feels yeah. like, it feels kind of like disappointing and all. But for example, if you were streaming this with me and we went live on Twitch and then I promoted it and I hosted you and you went over and like, you know, we started this interview, you might have a hundred viewers. And then, you know, the next time you do a gaming stream, you might, you know, not everyone's going to stay, but you might still have 30 or 40 viewers and they're right. all talking. And, and that's, that is the hardest part. I truly believe looking over and seeing a dead chat can be really like, it just makes you feel like, oh, am I doing good enough? You know, we, we're in an era right now where our entire job, Stevie, are quantified. Everyone can see how we're doing. We can see how we're doing. There's a number attached to everything. And it's really stressful. Um, so I just, I only do shit that I think is fun, but yeah. you know, Isn't since it weird? I wanted to ask you, I just saw this black mirror episode. I don't know if you watch black mirror. On of this, course. But I just saw the one called nosedive. Yeah. Where, um, the girl, she gets rated there. She's in a world where like everyone's rated through their social media. Like, yes. you know, like 4.5, like 4.5 or higher are like regarded as respectable people, you know? Mm -hmm. but anything below that and it we're like literally just we're like in that era when you say that through our instagram everyone's we're waiting for we're waiting for likes and comments and all that and uh it's just weird we're in this world right now i know yeah it's i i we are in this world but i think it's a choice to be captured by it entirely yeah uh, i i have i have like <laughs> i've um self I wouldn't say self-esteem issues, but I have days where my self-esteem goes up and down. And about- We all do, we're human. We true. all have those days, yeah. About three years ago or so, I felt like my self-worth was dictated by my numbers. And so I made it's a conscious- hmm? It's not true. It Yes, exactly. So I tried to make a conscious effort of separating my numbers from me as an individual and just seeing it as a metric that I can control based on how much work I'm putting in that week right? Um, and not a reflection of me. Right, so, right. So you need that separation. Yeah, I believe everyone should have that separation, but yeah. it's really important to create it hopefully in the beginning of your career or maybe before you hit some crazy peak because yeah. what comes up must come down and there's nothing worse than you know having your period where you're hitting quarter of a million views on every video and now you're only hitting 100k it feels like such a deep cut but like Damn, dude that's a lot 100k yeah i know but you think about how many youtubers are miserable because they go from 250,000 to 100 and they think that they're not good what? enough yeah <laughs> That's crazy. Oh my God, Stevie, it happens all the time. I know people that get half a million views that are clinically depressed because their peak was a million or two million. Whoa. I'd yeah. be happy if I just get 10 thou. God, <laughs> imagine, you know, there's people that compare themselves to others, but then it's so sad when you're comparing yourself to yourself in the well, past. Well, you'll never be happy. It's uh, There's mm -hmm. a term, it's called comparing and despairing. Yeah, I'm, gonna, yeah, I'm stealing that. You'll never be happy. I'm stealing that for sure. Content. Do you think <laughs> we'll ever be in a world where all this stuff's out the window where no one's looking at social media or rating or liking or commenting, you know? Nope. We used to, we used to rate people. The only metric we had to look at from the bat was your appearance. That's why I think that appearances were so... Um, held at high regard. And now I think that your numbers mean more than your appearance. So then your appearance oh, comes second. Oh, you really think so, huh? Yeah. But wouldn't you say that your appearance could add to your numbers in a way? Oh, absolutely. I Are mean, you kidding come me? On, let's when be we, real. Let's be real. <laughs> when we started this show, I'll, I was just thinking, I was like- right now and give you some examples. Dude, I was going to say, I should have, you know, changed my shirt, maybe put on a little more oh, no, makeup. You're fine. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. You're fine. No. But it, but it's, but it's true. If I had come on here, like, 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 you know, makeup, all this yeah. shit done, then you how do you, how do you keep up with these pressures? How I do you, on a, I, Stevie, I'm just curious, like how, how, can, how does one measure up to that? You know, <laughs> the answer to your question is I simply do not. <laughs> so you just do whatever you just do you. Yes. Always. Oh, I don't. 
always, I don't fit into any mold. I don't fit into any group. I don't fit yeah. into any stereotype. I am me and I'm still figuring out more about myself every day. So there's no reason to pigeonhole myself. Right, myself. right. Why do you think it is on social media that people like want to like show their, their lives like it's some kind of glamorous movie when you know damn well it's not like that? No, they're lying to themselves as well. Like I live in a little studio right it's like mm -hmm. if I were to position my camera like I lived in this big house when people well they know that I don't live that way you know what I mean yeah I I perception huh they just want to give up that the people that yes they care a lot about the perception and how other people see them and I I mean of course I get that sometimes at time I get that at times but I'm not driven by that right right it seems like you had to do, you, you've been doing a lot of soul searching then as far as like, just like the, the it's kind of the steps that you've taken to be more independent. That's the way I'm kind of getting. getting yeah, it. I think so. And I, I feel like about like a year and a half ago, I started like, this is going to sound so corny, but I started trying to search it, searching a little bit more for my own personal purpose because it's easier to get out of bed every day when you know why you're getting out of bed. So right. I wanted something to stick to. And although I haven't found my life's purpose yet, I feel like I find a good purpose for every year or every six months or whatever I'm going through. So I stick to that to get yeah. me through it. And then sometimes I might go through a little depression, a little hump, a little something, but yeah, I'm actively searching for my purpose and I'm going to find it. Right. I like that. I like that. And we'll end it kind of like on that positive note. I like that. <laughs> okay. Um, so right now, before you go, I wanted to, um, end it with all your um shout outs like your uh all your social media and your website whatever you want to promote right now go my ahead. stuff okay a lot of stuff look just go to my instagram it's at big boss bows b-i-g-b-o-s-s-b-o-z-e -S -S -E. you can find me on twitch on mondays i also appear on the scuffed podcast on thursdays usually rotating cast but i'm usually there i do a couple other things with other people on twitch but if you follow my instagram or my Twitter. I'll usually post updates about where I am and you can find me and we'll do cool stuff. And if you want to send a uh, boss, any kind of beats or music, send <gasps> all your stuff to. Oh, my Instagram at big boss Bose. Send me your stuff. I will collab with you. Let's fucking go. That sounds so fun. <laughs> and then for part two, cause you, you will come back on here right in the future. <laughs> oh, I sure. expect you to be promoting your ep or lp all right okay all right when the i'm when, gonna hold you to that okay all right and then so like it, you know i don't know when that will be but i'm gonna hold you to that i'll be like okay uh how do people listen to your album now okay and then yeah. cb and i will go That's into our whole wouldn't you say yes we'll and we'll have a whole two-hour discussion on being uh old school hip-hop heads and we'll yeah, go in on I it mean, i like what i like <laughs> hey thank you so much uh for uh taking part in the stevie weeb show i appreciate your time thank you wait hold on wait where's my phone i gotta take a picture of us really quick so i can yeah. post on my story hold on i just wanna ah, there it is yeah that's fine <laughs> it's thanksgiving tomorrow stevie. yeah i know okay. wait let's see we do we're doing this late we got it and okay. you're doing the typical Asian piece. <laughs> okay, ready? <laughs> okay, perfect. I got it. I'll tag you and I'll post it in a little bit. Uh, I'm probably going to post it now, but I'll promote when the episode comes out. All right, too. so I'm just letting you know, um, FYI, um, FYI, for your info. Sorry, God, I, like my brain's going to FYI, no, you're good. For your information. This um, episode's, because I'm ahead on episodes. So, the, so this is going to be dropping in a few weeks. I think, oh, I'm two we I think I'm like two weeks ahead of schedule. Okay. That sounds good. Boz, thank you for your time. I wish you the best of luck in your future musical endeavors. And I'm <laughs> going to still hold you to that. I'm going to hold you accountable. Okay. Uh, so you, 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 you're motivated to, to record. Wait, yeah, I need that, Stevie. Hold yeah. me accountable. Okay. All okay. right. Thank and you. Have, hey, have a great Thanksgiving. Okay. You too. Okay. Thanks for your time. <laughs> okay. All right. You could go, you could get off now. I still have to do some announcements, but you don't have to, you, you don't have to hang around. For, all right. All right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll see you. Bye guys. Right. Bye Peace. Stevie. Peace.
All right, so there you go. Erica Boz, Bosman. Um, that was a longer than 45 minutes, I believe. Um, I just need to do a couple shout outs. Um, I do have a Patreon attached to the show. If you wanna uh, help keep this alive, uh, go to patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby. Uh, the newest patrons this week are Gilbert Marquez, Lewis Clifford, Eric Astrup, and Smarth Chadha. Chadha. Um, the newest music video is done, The Pod in Which We Travel. It seems to be doing fairly well. People seem to like it. It's a, it's a bit different. I believe we, we wanted to do something different and we used a, a matchbox car, you know, we, 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 we used a matchbox car set and the GoPro uh, taped onto this um, car. And yeah, man, it, it's, it, it's a pretty interesting video. So go to youtube.com slash Stevie Weeby to watch that. I'm also more than halfway done with my concept album. I feel stir crazy. I'm really trying to hone in on it and just finish it up solid. Um, and that's going to be um, on my band camp. All my music's at stevieweebybandcamp.com. My Instagram is Instagram slash Q-U-A-N-G-O-U. Um, my website is at stevieweebyshow.com. If you decide to get a shirt or a hoodie, just know that the, the shipping may be delayed because of COVID and the quarantine. Um, did I cover everything? There is no Little Ray's World, uh, but he will be featured on the newest concept album, maybe one or two songs. He's pushing for two. He's already on one, but he's he keeps sending me the, these SOSs and these, these telegrams saying, hey, man, you know, blah, blah, blah. I deserve to be on more than one song. And then, and his robot beep starts, is hitting me up too. You know what I mean? So, um, and I do have a PO box. If you want to send anything, fan mail, packages, or whatever you want to send, because uh, I do a, a whole vlog series on this stuff uh, that y'all send in, send your stuff to 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, PO box 1391, LA, California, 90093. With that being said, thanks for tuning in. Till next time. Peace.